Welcome back to the Kent ISD Remote Learning Boot Camp Video Recording and Screencasting Module. This is Segment 2, Recording Your Instruction. In Segment 1, you are looking through a bunch of tips and tricks of different ways that you can incorporate um, video instruction into your remote learning environment. Um, specifically looking at planning ideas and different things to get ready for that. One thing I want to note before we get into segment two here is that even though we're giving you lots of choice in this upcoming module um, and giving you lots of different ideas, it's important for you to use a recording method that's right for you and your students. There's no one way to do this. There's lots of different ways. And one, hopefully one of those ways will connect with you. Find what's right for you, find what's right for your students, and go with that. Ultimately, you'll stick with it longer, you'll produce a better product if you're doing something that feels good to you. That being said, we're going to start out this unit by looking at um, the difference between recording and screencasting, and then we're going to get our hands dirty and actually record something this time. So re recording video can be as simple as just grabbing a phone out of your pocket and recording what's happening in the environment. You can record your instruction just the same way. You don't need a whole lot of things, except for one thing you might want is a holder. Um, so we've linked a $15 phone holder you can grab off of Amazon that we like. Um, but you can also build things, build a phone holder out of things that are around your house. So it's something like binder clips, um, toilet paper rolls, Legos. I linked a, a YouTube list that has a whole bunch of different ideas for how you might be able to build a phone holder out of things that are just around your house. Okay. One thing I want to caution you on is make sure that they're recorded horizontal, right? Um, because that is the way that they are viewed by our students. Okay, so that's recording. Screencasting is when we're capturing what's happening on our screen, okay? So generally that requires a little bit of software. I'm going to show you two tools that I use a lot that I really like. Um, and something to keep in mind is what you're seeing on my screen right now is actually Google Slides. I put all my content in there to keep it organized and keep me on track and concise with what I need to say. Um, and it also makes it look kind of nice. Um, most screencasting tools will give you the option to give you a picture, like you see right now, a picture in one of the corners of your screen of me talking or you talking over your content and we recommend that because it gives a more personal feel to your videos. Um, two little tips that I would give you while you're recording and some maybe something to do right now, turn on do not disturb. Nothing's more embarrassing or frustrating than when a whole bunch of notifications pop up on your computer screen while you're recording. Um, there's no real good way to edit those out, you almost just have to start over. So um, pay attention to that. Close all unnecessary tabs and windows. So anything else that's going on on your screen can be distracting. Just make sure you keep everything off that is not necessary for your instruction. Okay, so we've got our ideas, we've got our things and our tips and tricks, and we're all ready to go. How do we actually do this? Here's the two tools that I recommend to educators a lot. The first is Loom. Um, Loom is a recorder that's built right into the um, Chrome web browser or it's got an iOS app as well. Makes it super easy to record. You click on the icon, up comes a couple options, click and go, okay? I'm not gonna walk you through it. My friend Edie Clark here will. Um, she walks you through all the steps of how to record your own video, it's super easy. Um, it does have a little bit of basic editing tools in Zoom, which I like, and there's it also saves it right into Loom's um, servers, so you don't have to go and share it out somewhere else unless you want to. Some of the drawbacks, um, it requires a web browser or an app. Okay, there's no software for it. And there's no Android app yet. They're working on that right now. Also on the mobile app, there's no editing at all. So just watch out for that when you're working with Zoom. Uh, Screencastify is the other tool um, that I recommend a lot. It's been around for a while. It's fantastic on Chromebooks. So if you are one of the teachers out there working on Chromebooks, it's most of us. Um, this is a great tool to use. It's just like Loom in the fact that you install it into your Chrome web browser, click on it, choose a couple options, and start recording right there. Super easy. The thing I love about this is it connects directly into your Google Drive, so it never eats up space on your hard drive. It just kind of works um, in that system of Google. 
Um, it can also do the same thing with YouTube if you want. Some of the drawbacks, again, requires the web browser. It's got some limited editing tools. Um, the free version doesn't have a whole lot. And the free version only has a five minute maximum recording length, um, which if you think back to the segment one tips and tricks, um, you really shouldn't be recording videos that are much longer than five minutes anyways. So unless you're super long winded, that probably won't be a, uh, a, a big problem for you. But that's Screencastify and you can check out how to use that by clicking on the video here. There are a couple other options for recording that you might like, depending on your teaching style. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here um, in this, for the sake of time, but uh, you may want to check out Flipgrid or um, Camtasia Studio, depending on your, your situation. Okay, so it's time to get our hands dirty. Uh, we are going to create a video introducing yourself to your future students um, for your deliverable for this segment. Now, it's going to feel super awkward at first. We get it. Okay? But the only way that you get more comfortable and better at it is by practicing. So we're hoping that you will take some time to practice just capturing video using one of the tools we described in this segment. So when you're done with that, um, make sure that it's about one to two minutes in length. Include a video of yourself and a screencast so we know that you can capture both your screen and yourself. And then paste a link to that unedited video. You don't have to do any editing at this point because we're getting into that next segment. Um, just post that link right into the checklist and we're good to go and we'll see you again in segment three. Have fun and we'll see you then.